Max, what'd you do all over the bye weekend? Um, so I actually uh, I went went to Waco. Um, so my girlfriend, who I met here at Texas A&M, uh, plays volleyball up there, and I uh, went and watched uh, Waco. The ball, the, uh, excuse me, the Baylor volleyball team played Texas. Um, so I went and watched that game and hung out up there. So when you go away after a big big game, regardless of the outcome of it, how do you get that momentum back going into an upcoming weekend, especially when you face off against a team that also was on a bye? Um, I think it's important that you know you kind of start prepping on uh, on Sunday, you know, because I mean if you start trying to think about it. Okay, now it's Monday. I'm gonna try starting now. You get a little bit behind the ball. Um, I think it's important, you know. Sunday night I started watching film, um, started kind of getting a breakdown of like what I thought of these guys. I'm just kind of like their defense, the looks they're gonna give us, and stuff like that. Um, I think it's important that, you know, knowing that they're also on a buy, that they've got extra preparation for us too. Um, so it's important that we, you know, look into the details the best that we can and try and get as best prepared as we can. And then we didn't get to talk to you last week, but what was the message after the game in Tuscaloosa that Jimbo presented to you guys before going into the bye? Um, Matt, I think the message was, you know, the inches are, are, are where you win and lose those games. Um, you know, and we had opportunities. Um, we had opportunities um, throughout that game that could have given us a chance to win it. Um, and I think that, you know, our defense performed phenomenally. You know, getting all the turnovers that they did um, was huge and super crucial. Um, but. He's like, you know, we just play with the best team in the country. Um, and I mean, it shows that we can do it. We just got to go out there and be able to do it more consistently. We'll stay front row on the right to Travis. I know uh, Haynes is, is the guy, but how have you seen Connor Wegman uh, progress as a true freshman? And, and if for some reason he'd ever have his number called, do you, how confident do you feel in his ability to, to run the offense and to be successful? Uh, very confident. Um, Connor's kind of a guy who comes in, his football IQ is off the chart. Um, I mean, you look at him whenever he's out there, he seems so relaxed on the field. Nothing really ever seems to get under his skin, um, which is kind of crazy because if you go out there with a the practice, the quarterbacks are getting hounded by Coach Fisher. Uh, he is definitely on him hard. And, you know, he's one of those guys where when Coach asks him why and, and he explains, okay, well, here's what I saw. Here's the look that I saw. I made this read. It's usually like, okay, I see what you're seeing there, but this is the, the better way to do it. He learns super quickly. Um, you know, the kid's a natural leader whenever he's out there on the field, naturally encouraging guys. He, he has a lot of fun out there, and he, and he kind of puts things in perspective. He's like, hey, this is football. Let's go out and have fun, you know, not try and make things bigger than they are. We'll go back to TV row on the left side to Tyler. Max, do you feel like the offense took a step forward last week? And then what, what have you seen, especially from the, the young guys um, in this bye week, what they've been working? Uh, I think so, yeah. Um, I think that, you know, just some young guys who've really been taking some steps. Um, Cam Dewberry. For him to be able to come in that game, you know, get some crucial reps and be able to help us out uh, on the offensive line was huge. Um, you know, we've had some guys go down um, on the offensive line, and being able to have some young guys step up is definitely um, really crucial. You know, you got to be able to have depth, especially in such a long season in the SEC. You're going to have guys that are going to get hurt, banged up, and being able to have young guys come in there, step in, and not just fill the role, but um, also perform really well at it is super important. Um, so I think guys like Cam Dewberry um, during the bye week, I mean Connor being able to step in and get a lot of reps, um, and you know preparing himself the best that he can. Um, just plenty of other young guys who are out there performing really well. We'll stay behind the lights and go to the right side. Max, obviously we saw a losing streak Tennessee to Alabama. You know, lost 15 in a row to them. Obviously, you going to South Carolina, and we know y'all dominated them. So what's the mindset with, with your team headed into uh, Columbia Saturday night, knowing that? You've beaten them seven times in a row, but you're probably going to get their, their best shot. I mean, it's kind of it's like every other away game. You know, playing any away game in the SEC is really tough. Um, you know, every single atmosphere is super unique, super difficult to play in. Um, you know, you can't take anything for granted. Yeah, we beat them in the past, but like I've said, this year's a new year. Um, you know, they got a lot of talent on their team, a lot of guys who've come from a lot of transfers. You know, Spencer Rattler and then also the tight end who came with them from Oklahoma are two really talented guys on their offense. Um, I think that you can't take anything for granted, you know. Um, as much as we've beat them in the past couple of years, this is an entirely new season. Um, you know, we got to put things together and be prepared and go in there with our best stuff. Any more questions? We'll go to the left side to cease. Sticking with that South Carolina theme, uh, you even had you had touched on catch against them a couple of years ago. Why do you feel that uh, A&M has played so well against them? I know you play them every year, a la the West. You guys treat them any different than other teams, or why? Why do you think? Um, I think we don't really treat them any different than any other team. Um, you know, I think that going into the game against them, for some reason, our guys get a little bit fired up, I guess. Uh, the, the bottom trophies always fun to win. Um, but 
it's it's just like any game in the SEC. Um, they're a really good team, and so are most teams in the SEC West. Um, I think that you know we always try and come in there with the best preparation that we have for every team, and we've just been really good at preparing for them. We'll go front row on the right to Brent, and then to David. Hey, when you say the Bonham Trophy is always fun to win, are you having a little fun there, or do, is that something y'all actually discuss? Uh, it, it, it's 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 fun. Um, I love the fact that it stays at the Alamo. Uh, I was talking to AC before this, and he was kind of talking to me about it, but it it's good fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. We'll stay on the right side to David. I know the focus is one game at a time, but do you guys look at the big picture, the rest of the way, what the season can look like, forecasting with these games left? Um, you know, after the um, Alabama game, we, we try to, you know, keep things in perspective, you know, and, and what we talked about was, hey, went out. You know, if we if we can put things together and, you know, play like we did that night and perform, um, there's there's no reason why we can't win out. Um, I think, yeah, you want to look at the big picture and look at all these games coming up, but you have to take it day by day. You know, if you start looking too far in the future and thinking of these games that are coming up, you'll let a game slip that you shouldn't let slip. So we got we to gotta focus on the task at hand. That's South Carolina. We'll go front row on the right side to Cole. Max, I know that everyone wants to focus in on Alabama and LSU in these games that really have a little bit more pizzazz to it. But do you guys view South Carolina as a rival because you play them every year? I mean, it's it's funny. We, uh, you know, since A&M's transferred in the SEC West, I feel like everyone's been trying to find out kind of who our rival is. Well, every single week could be a rival game almost. You know, I mean, every single team's got talent. There's a lot of chemistry between the two teams. You know, we've all kind of been recruited to these SEC schools. We all kind of know each other. Um, it's kind of fun whenever people ask me if, if we consider this team as a rival or this team as a rival. Well, I mean, like, shoot, we play every single team as if they're a rival every single week. It's a close game. Um, I mean, so it, it, it's rivalry week almost every single week. We'll go back to TV Road to Justin on the right side. Max, whether it's Connor or, or Haynes, if he's healthy enough to play, just the passing game in general, where do you feel like it is coming off this bye week? And um, we've seen you guys hit some more bass pass plays down the field. Hmm. Expect more of that? Uh, I, I, I think so. You know, I think this receiving core that we have is super talented. Um, I think that, you know, right now they're taking some steps in the right direction. I mean, obviously, Evan Stewart had a phenomenal game. Um, Moose Muhammad's another guy who really stepped in to make some really big plays. Um, I have all the confidence in the world in those guys. And, you know, the steps that they're taking is, you know, freshmen being able to step in there and, and really make an impact on the field is huge. And being able to utilize them any way that we can, whether it's, you know, just – ISO slants on a single side, or, or if it's the deep ball shot, um, they can go make plays. Any more questions? All right, thank you, Max. Awesome.